This is this is a pretty cool topic, isn't it? It's been front of mind for us for a little while now. And uh, yeah, so it'd be, it's super cool to bring it to you today. Um, because, you know, it's something we talk about a lot, isn't it, about following your heart, um, finding it, you know, if, if we're honest, most people out there in the big wide world don't actually even know what that even means, you know, what is their heart, what's in their heart, what's true for them. Uh, and even, you know, sometimes as, as long as we've been in the work, sometimes we forget that there's this sense of our heart, don't we? Mm. we forget, you know, we, because we get drawn into our egoic agendas and those sorts of things and, and the, re- the reality of those. Yeah, it's usually the, um, you know, those aspects of our egoic agenda have more of a tangibility to them, more of a familiarity. So we're, we're kind of inclined to be able to feel like, oh, yeah, there's, there's some substance here. There's something I, I'm familiar with. And when, then when it comes to the heart, that can feel a little more, um, you know, unfamiliar because, um, as natural as, and, and as true as it is for us, it, we're not that, um, used to connecting with that aspect of ourselves necessarily. So, um, whilst, like you're saying, well, well, we, we, we know about our heart and, and about what's there and what's true. Um, we can still, when we're, when, when we're in our, um, ego, our ego, um, you know, it can see us kind of, um, holding on to the familiar and staying in that space. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. So, so what is the heart? Well, the heart is very much differentiated from our rational mind, isn't it? So, you know, when we're in that figuring out mode, in that referencing our past and our, our values and our limiting beliefs and, it, you know, all those unconscious agendas, it's, it's very much being in the super conscious orientation. It's that sort of feminine aspect of mind, if you like. So, uh, and, and as we know, it's essentially who you really are. You know, when you go into, into the true essence of you, uh, and what you love inherently, Apparently, that's that's what your heart's all about. And, you know, our, our, our greatest power derives from being in that orientation. We are in our most powerful state when we are in communion and connection with our heart and, and inherently with what we love. So it's really important that we understand what that is because that brings us into that state of oneness. You know, we all know uh, by now we're not dealing with uh, any, you know, newbies here. We're all, we're all high-level creators. We know that state of when we're in connection with our oneness, in connection with our essence, in connection with what's true for us and what we learned in the intrepid creator with the law of the one and the many you know the closer we are to the one the the more amplified our power the more amplified and and energized and vital we are in the direction of what's true for us but when we're not in our heart we're in our you know we're either in our rationality or we're in our beliefs or we're in even in our wounding we become fractured and fragmented so we become part of the many and um it's it's a very different game it's a very different essence uh as opposed to that heart-centered space so it really is about when we're in that that close to the oneness point that we can be with anything it's it's a it's a very inclusive way of being in the world you know it's um Everything is is allowed to be in basically in the theme of working for the highest good. So when um, we talk about vulnerability and the power of that, that's ex- essentially what we're talking about. That you you're in and with your heart, and doesn't matter what the conditions are, doesn't matter what the wounding is that's showing up. It's all in the in, in your true essence, and it's all working for the highest good. So it, it's it is really a, a very powerful state to be in, isn't it? In yeah. terms of that side of things yeah very much so and and it's like when we are inwardly um, fluent in that way where we are closer to the one we are of an attractive nature in our lives um, with regard to how we connect with others and interact with others um, with regard to our our wealth our abundance everything really um, because being inwardly fluent means being outwardly influential in our lives as well and so that um, you know connecting and being with our heart really supports us in in that truth, you know, in, in coming and orientating from there in life. Mm. You know, and, and something that's very demonstrative of that is that, you know, obviously Craig and I have been in business for a long time, even together, let alone separately, and we've both had the experience where we've gone for something that's been coming from our identity. It's been coming from our wounding when we're putting something out there in the world as a business offering, haven't we? Like it's just yeah. like, okay, so we've got to make this happen and, you know, for whatever reason, unconsciously the things that were going on under the surface was being driven by 
an egoic agenda. And, you know, the thing is, is that we we usually made some big things happen. But what happened was usually some sort of, uh, let's call it a, a level of disaster on the other side of that. Like there was either some rack and ruin or it was just really hard to keep managing and keep maintaining along the way. Uh, it just became a game of, holy shit, what on earth did we do that for? Because... <laughs> That was, that was not the optimal experience. But the reason was because we weren't coming from heart. We were coming from something that, that you know, it felt good, felt like a great direction or, if, you know, all these sorts of things. But it was only felt good because it was it was salving our inner wounds, you know, that, that not belonging, for example, or the need to succeed or whatever it had to be that um, that we felt that we were, well, we didn't, we didn't even know. Obviously, this is all happening unconsciously. But on that level of, of the ego, trying to, make up for what we thought was incomplete about ourselves and every single flip in time it ended up being a really bad thing in the end right because it wasn't in our highest good it wasn't in the highest good of the people we were serving it wasn't in the highest good of the world it was only there to serve an egoic wound it was a compensation yeah. it was a shit show it was, <laughs> <laughs> was the, the, the wording that comes to mind yeah um and and it was interesting because We'd both be working really hard, you know, at, at these um, undertakings, and and that that also is a compensation. You know, I'm working hard, so I'm deserving of of success, and I'm also being perceived by others as successful based on my level of busyness, sort of thing. So it, it wasn't hard at all. Um, but it was interesting to to note the difference between when you when there's a lot going on and you're in your heart is a very different world to when there's a lot going on and, and you're not mm, you yeah. know it's a struggle isn't it it's yeah like that's right versus yeah flow. and I think our biggest lesson was when we tried to franchise you know that was a yeah. really big thing and you know we had a big cheer squad we had um we had these gurus who um, ended up being our our predators in the end and this is totally because we set this up like we created yeah. this well and truly uh so we had these people People who were supposedly helping us to do that whole process and were well versed in it and all that sort of stuff. We had uh, investors uh, who were mostly friends and family. We were working eighty hours a week. Like this is an indication of it. we were set. We had a little co-working space because it was just too busy at home. The kids, you know, we were sort of impinging on their space. So we we set up a co-working space office, mm. and uh, we were working so hard. One day, our flipping car got towed, and we had to walk home. <laughs> And it was raining and my shoes got ruined and my, you know, and all this sort of stuff. And I just remember thinking, you know, and that should have probably been one of the earlier signs that, God damn it, we're not on the right path. You know, <laughs> that's a shit show's happening. Uh, we had to, you know, it, it took all, like the car was locked away for the whole weekend yeah. and all this sort of stuff. It cost us 600 bucks to get it back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My shoes weren't cheap. Like I normally knock around in runners if you know me well, but I, for whatever reason, I wore my nails there and they're like 300 bucks and stuff. And so it's just like the whole thing was a shit show. Anyway, but the whole thing just, it, it got worse from there, obviously. And um, we Much got worse. well and truly ripped off. <laughs> We got told that if we didn't, um, we got told, got legal advice if we didn't desist uh, trading in that very moment, we'd be going to jail. We had, oh my god, like it was oh, it well and truly hit the fan, right? Mm. Uh, um, and now the story's really long, so I won't give you any more than that. But just let's just say it was a disaster, and we essentially lost everything, and, you know, financially, our reputation, our, you know, our, um, you know, it, it felt like we lost a lot of love and respect with family and friends. Obviously, we did. I'm sure there's still people out there who are bitter about it. But also, in the same moment, you know, those true family and friends who were involved, they're still, you know, our dearest and nearest, and they don't, you know, they don't give us a hard time about it or anything like that. So, you know, in, in that way, we sort of you saw the duality of it. It was interesting, though, because the very things that we were compensating left, right and centre for were the things that um, got blown away in that whole sort of outcome. Like we we uh, lost our sense of integrity and, and you know, and um, looked like frauds. And so everything that our egos um, were, were telling us about ourselves, which had which was driving how we were working and operating, um, kind of came to fruition and structurally that's very sound you know mm. of course it should have because we were we were really punching the, the power into our egoic stories mm. and, uh, and our wounds absolutely yeah. but look we see it as tuition fees you yeah. know and that was they were expensive tuition fees but was it worth it yes because yeah. now we don't go anything about anything about business without going to our heart first yeah. so Craig and I 
Um, it's about tuning in, knowing what's true, what's the heart say, what's super conscious say. And, and we've just learned to completely abandon the ego in that respect, haven't we? It's because yeah, otherwise it's, it's just it's very <laughs> unreliable. So as far as uh, as that's concerned, you know, making it well worth the lesson, mm. uh, did we have to go through that level of pain? Probably not. Uh, but and, and here we are sharing that with you so that you don't have to go through that level of pain, you know, if you're ever in doubt about this, and hopefully you guys are sort of beyond that anyway. But really get the lesson, you know, don't because your life's either a warning an example at that stage our life was a warning don't fucking do that (laughs) (laughs) know your heart follow your heart right so so really really important so uh but you know we you know now we're pretty much open to anything because it couldn't really get any worse than that could it like we've we've been to the bottom of the pit as far as i'm concerned apart from we didn't actually go to jail we didn't get prosecuted or anything like that but jesus you know what we we didn't know what we'd been dragged into and uh anyway it was it turned out it was a bit <laughs> But we also, in, in the moment when we came back on, online into being basically, I don't know if we were guided per se, or maybe it was a guardian angel moment because I don't think we were still back into the full flow of heart, heart-centred heart um, living, but we managed to draw in an incredible person, little guy in a wheelchair with an attitude like a freaking bulldog, mm-hmm. and he sorted the whole thing out. It took a while, but but somehow he just got, came into our world, didn't he? Yeah. You know, it's through a connection of mine who just, intu- well, he intuitively dropped into me, and I said, oh, I'm going to reach out to this guy. Yeah. And he said, yeah, I, got, I know exactly the people to get you in touch with. And then that was gone from there, right? So so my intuition was still there, but I don't know how because I felt like I'm under a ton of bricks. It's um, one of those, one of the, was actually for me one of those moments, I've had two of them in my life where I thought, is it worth going on, right? Really it was that level of gravity. It was just like I don't think that's, that's something that, uh, and I'm not that type of person. Like I'm really a, oh, there's always a way, you know, <laughs> But there was a, that was one of those moments where it's like, I don't know if it's worth it. But anyway, so here we are um, talking about living from heart. So uh, I wanted to bring you to the word courage. We've all heard of the word courage, but do we really understand what it means? So in Latin, courage comes from the will to express your heart. And you may have seen that courage is often symbolized by a sword and the sword is actually the the symbol for will so it's the will to express your heart and it sounds really interesting doesn't it mm. to to really when you get to the heart of it because courage to to us is like you know it, it was like the opposite of fear i guess or that you 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 feel fear but you're courageously stepping forward in what's the truth for you uh and another word that i like to use in relation to this is also compassion because Essentially, we, we need to be in that state of being open and, and uh, available to anything. So no matter what you're suffering, no matter what is going on in your world, you keep your heart open, right? Because if you, hit, if you close down your heart, then you lose access to all the important things that uh, are going to be bringing you forward and through the darkness to get you to the other side. Because each journey has the potential to have dark, darkness within it for us to face our shadows or face our dragons and then to up level from there and to, to become the next version of ourselves, being that expansive, beautiful human that you are. So it's important to remember the best way to do that is to still be open hearted to whatever's coming. And, uh, and, even if you're feeling your wounds, even if you have a deep connection to something that's going on in your in your awareness around your beliefs or your you know your past references or what you you egoically value in life, the more open the heart, the the more you'll be able to move through that darkness of the or the dark night of the soul part of that journey, and then up level into the next part of the per, of the people that you are. So yeah, <clears throat> well, it it is a part of like staying open to that and allowing yourself to move through and beyond. Um, it really is a part of the you know the the expansive nature of conscious creating in our lives. It's how we we're really coming home to the truth of who we are and our greatness. You know by by being willing and open to um, to moving through these things. So wherever we can remain connected and open to our heart as that kind of guiding light through through that darkness, then we we grow, we expand, we up-level, you know, because of it, because we discover more about ourselves that we didn't know um, prior to going through those experiences. So it's a, it's a willingness to soften and to continue to lean in to proceed, you know, when those things are showing up. And it's not a case of if they do, it's expected. It's a part, it's a natural part of the 
creative process is that we're going to experience, um, you know, a shadow sort of thing. So, mm. yeah, yeah, the doorway. Absolutely. So you must be in the energy of inclusion uh, for the highest good, you know, so that, as I said before, it's to do with your vulnerability. Anything's allowed to happen. Anything's allowed to exist. The highest possibility of your sense of being, you know, just really being in touch with that. And, of course, we've got the the beautiful sense of, uh, of that every day. I sound like a Kiwi then. Every day as we um, step into the fullness of who we are with our choices. You know, you've got that opportunity every morning. You wake up, the head comes off the pillow, the feet hit the floor. I, I choose to live my true nature and purpose. You can be straight away there in a moment as long as you're not just doing a tick and flick with your choices. Use it as the opportunity to orientate and really be in your heart. Then anything's allowed to happen because, you know, in that higher sense of who you are, you're not only in your greatest creative power, um, but you're always in a state of, of connection with love and love is the bridge to everything. And love never goes away, even though we feel like it does, even though we can feel contracted or fractured or, or separate. If you if you take a moment and you just bring your awareness back to love, it's there every single flip in time. It doesn't matter what's going on. There's always that deeper sense of underneath everything, love is always there. And um, so if you're able to keep your heart open no matter what, uh, then you, you'll, you'll know you're always okay emotionally, psychologically, physically, energetically. Everything is still okay because you, you've got that central connection to the truth, which is love is always there no matter what is going on. It doesn't die. You can't separate yourself from it as much as you can feel separate from it, but you actually cannot separate yourself from love no matter what is going on. Um, and, you know, so people like Viktor Frankl, good example of that right yeah um craig's done a fair bit of study on his work and 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 his life and all that sort of thing and you know so from what you've told me because i haven't done a lot in it but um you know that's his state of being right mm, that's right i mean the the um you know some of those most horrific uh moments that a human can experience in their world and he he was able to still remain connected to love and connected to the hearts of his heart and the hearts of other people and and see through and beyond the bigger picture, you know, and a, a vision beyond the current reality, the, the horrific conditions that they're all experiencing. It, experiencing, and and you know, for a lot of those people, they they didn't make it through that experience, and he made it through uh, to go on to write many books and to um, to have massive impact in the world and create. Um, you know, a legacy that li will live on way beyond him. Mm, him being well, already here. has, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And and to educate and, you know, people uh, in expansive ways and, you know, an amazing example of what's possible for all of us because we all have a heart, we all have greatness, you know, and, and conditions, if they don't get the power, then the heart and our greatness is what, what, um, what we give the power to. So... Mm. Absolutely. So, so love just opens up eternal possibilities. Like there's just limitless. And, and you know, all we want to know is what's aligned with our true nature and purpose, what we came here to do and, and express and experience and and be. So, uh, but but everything becomes open to you. It's just it's just all there for you, like a platter, like a buffet. There's no, you know, you don't cut things off like you do when your ego's in control, going, oh, well, that's not for me because Auntie Mary won't like me saying that on Facebook or you know all these sorts of things. Oh, so, Mary. Auntie Mary. <laughs> She's so critical. <laughs> so, so let's just get let's just concretize to this level. Let's just get some shares now. So, pop your camera on and pop your hand up, and let's just get a couple of shares just to make sure we're all on the, the, the same understanding of of what this is about. But absolutely flexing that muscle until it's it's um, you know it just becomes a resonance that you know very well. That's my truth. And that's not my truth. You know, I'm not kidding myself anymore. I'm not mucking around. This is the truth. And my intention is strong to receive my truth and to see the truth and to, to have things revealed to me in, in life in the essence of the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Great. Good one. Good one. Thanks, Jordan. All right. Well, you've cracked the ice. Who's going next? You know, every, one of the things that William says a lot, which is, you know, everyone wants to get to heaven, but nobody wants to die. You know, it's so true. We don't want to have to let the old fall away. We don't want to die to our old life and our old ways of being because and that's what it feels like. It feels like you have to die because they were the things that kept you safe. Uh, but also they're the things that keep you limited. So in order to become expansive and to live fully like everybody says they want to, uh, we've, we have to let those parts of us die. And, and for us, you know, maybe that, that 
disaster that we were just talking about before was probably one of the best things because there was nothing left. We'd had to burn everything to the ground. We had to burn our, our egos to the ground. We had to burn our, our life to the ground. We, we Everything, it just had to go. And uh, maybe for us that was the, the path of least resistance in the end. Maybe that was the genius journey. I don't know, but I just know where, where it originated from was definitely an egoic agenda. Mm. Yeah, so letting that all burn away and die off and, and then come out anew. You know, the, I think there's there's a lot of awesome things about mythology and the things like the, the rising phoenix you know yeah. <laughs> it definitely has that essence for me about that whole story mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah well it was a damn good shake and and I don't know that um either of us would have come to the to the level of awareness that we did it um of the importance of you know the set B structure um without a, a, a really good shake up you mm. know um that that really meant that we had to uh, allow things to fall away and, and in saying it we could have still clung on you mm-hmm. know and tried to this that and the other and and whatever but we didn't we didn't thankfully we did let things fall away and that did allow for the new to come in it allowed us to be aware of new information and, and inspiration and that sort of thing so um it, it was yeah I think it was a good really a, a hard kick up the butt but um a necessary one yeah and you know I think the other thing is from my perspective I won't speak for you because you know you're you and I'm me uh, but it's um <laughs> you know if if it's like the opportunity to up level to that degree meant, meant going through something of that magnitude. And if that was presented again, would I take it? I'd be less fearful than I was then. Like I'd go, yeah, okay, bring it on. You know, because you know what's happened on the other side of that now, it's like, yeah, absolutely. You know, this is, uh, did I want it to go that way? Not necessarily, but am I scared of it happening again or happening to some sort of a level? No, but I know a lot more now and we, we're operating from a different structure. So it's unlikely that it'll be that way. But if it, if there is a big up leveling to happen for whatever reason, I'm open to it. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Well, you get to see your, your capacity for handling life, you know, and handling when things are not going, not going far from the way you'd love them to be. Mm. We have so much more capacity than we actually give ourselves credit for. Cause, you know, egoically, we don't, for me, egoically, I feel like I'm, you know, so far from complete and all this sort of thing. And, and that I'm empty, nothing, nothing in here, to, you know, and that that's, that's what my ego would love to have me buy into, but it's bullshit. It's just so untrue. So, you know, it, it's cool to, um, to go through those really um, try like those trials, those, those times to see that actually I didn't implode, you know, the world kept turning and and then there, there's this there's other opportunities to 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 rise above what's going on to grow and learn through it, and um, we all have that you know we, we can all do that. So to experience it, I, I, I value it. You mm, know? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, as uh, again, just to quote William, pain is inherent and suffering is optional. I think actually the Buddha said that, didn't he? Probably. <laughs> we, got, we put William on the same platform <laughs> as the Buddha. <laughs> We'll find out soon. Um, but, yeah, so so pain is inherent but suffering is optional. The suffering comes from a closed heart, by the way. It's like, no, it's the, and I'll explain that in a moment when we get into the next section, but it's like, yeah, that's that's where it comes from. That's where that that suffering it continues on is because we've closed our heart and, and put, basically put conditions on things. But, you know, really this, this is that the, the ego does hold that there are conditions that, that have to exist or that could, cannot exist. It's either way. There's certain conditions that it's put on your life and says, well, you know, it's just not okay for them to exist or, or not exist. So, uh, it, it, but that can't be the, the way that it is for you as a creator. You've got to be open to everything. When you're in your love, uh, you know, and and your viability is 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 there. Um, it, it, everything's possible. Whereas when you when you go into your ego and all those conditions, the love and viability gets suspended. That's where you become disconnected from the oneness of who you really are. So then you have a sense of, oh, I really need to protect myself. I need to make sure, you know, you, this is where you ha- start to hear languages, languages, languaging, such as, uh, oh, I've got to set boundaries with this person, or I've really got to, you know, I've really got to protect myself more. I need to do X, Y, Z. I've got to get rid of all the toxic people in my life, or I need to make sure I've got enough money so that I can do X, Y, Z. All those sorts of things. We become very protective and we go into management and control of these conditions. And the only way we can do that is by closing our heart and becoming 
critical and judgmental and assessing and rational. And so the heart has no room in here. Um, because you just don't want to suffer hurt. You know, you're trying to avoid what you think is going to be a future unwanted uh, emotion that you think in the future, I'm going to feel pain. I don't want to feel that pain. I've got to control and manage. Yeah, it actually reminds me of um, another little story <laughs> around good old, you know, experiences. But um, when when we had uh, the, the ongoing credit card debt, that no doubt you've probably all heard this, this, the story around that, but keeping that a bit short, it was going nowhere. It had been around for many years and we were kind of struggling to do anything about moving beyond it. And um, once we once we applied structure and became clear, things changed quite rapidly, um, but in a sustainable way where we never looked back. You know, we moved on and and uh, the area of, of um, abundance in our life started to really thrive, you know, and gain momentum. So, um, but what was interesting to, like, I guess in hindsight, was what we did the moment we we, we, we break free of the, the credit card debt was chop those suckers up, piss them off, and, you know, never again. You know, that, that was our kind of take on it, was we swore ourselves off debt and credit card essentially so we actually dropped into control right <laughs> yeah you know because it's like well the um that's what's got the power we can't have that in our lives because then we're, we're subject to to that you know so all of a sudden we, we were without knowing we were doing it we were um very focused on the supply versus being focused on a quality demand and when that happens what happens then is the demand shrinks to meet that uh, perception around a, a, a limited supply sort of thing. So it was a no-go zone for us, but it wasn't a powerful way for us to be in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so in more recent years, what we've done is opened our hearts up to, no, we're powerful, like, you know, and there's certain very real benefits to having a credit card when your relationship with that credit card is, um, is Function, functional. Yeah. You know, and it, it's an expansive thing that can really support your bigger picture and, and your abundance and all that sort of thing. It's all available. But, you know, where am I coming from? Where are we coming from in relation to that? So we open back up to that and realise there's a whole flow there that we were cutting ourselves off from because of our swearing ourselves off this thing that had bitten our asses for so many years, you know, <laughs> it was immovable. Yeah. It's like now being open to that, there's this real, you know, just as you were saying what you're saying, there's this sense of that that openness brings the opportunities into your um into your, your um awareness you know mm. that weren't there before absolutely and it's funny now because we have a credit card that has no limit which sounds ridiculous but essentially it has no limit on it. <laughs> it um does. yeah and we put it we we use it and the only things that go on there are high quality demand items that's it and it, it and every single month it gets paid off with ease and grace. We have not had one month, and, and I know we've had some big months with it, with different things for the business particularly, uh, including tax bills and all those sorts of things. We put it on there. Once it gets to the you know pay time, it's just like, yep, it's just done. It just happens with grace and ease because we've become uh, established in with that thing. And you know what it's been doing? It's been grooving us a, let's say, a shit ton of Qantas frequent flyer points and allowing us to sort of upgrade and do all sorts of awesome things and, and bring ourselves to a new level of being in our travel, right? So we just love it. We love it. We love having the credit card because we've brought it back into a heart opening state and making sure it's aligned with everything that, that our heart is calling us into and nothing that it doesn't. Like it doesn't, there is nothing frivolous that ever goes on that card because it's not, it, we just know that's just not where it's going to be. And it's not about, again, it's not about controlling or managing. It's actually more of a fact of we actually don't have a lot of frivolous things. You know, we don't drink or gamble or, you know, do anything really of any, um, well, some people would say fun. And no, we do have we lots of fun. No fun. <laughs> Zero fun. And it's very cheap, you know. Now, well, if I do go drinking, I am the cheap, cheapest drunk in the world. You are. One, one drink, and I'm like, oh, that's enough. <laughs> you know, so Fabulous time. Ever want to take me for a drink? <laughs> you only need to buy me one, I'm done. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, 
So, you know, once we get into controlling and managing, we're polarizing um, from basically from the conditions. We're, we're polarizing ourselves based on what the conditions are, what is allowed and is not allowed to exist, which is actually, when you think about it, the opposite of protecting yourself. You're actually buying into negative visions now. You're actually, you've got problems that you need to solve or avoid, and then you, you're going to set yourself up for a fall, just like we did with the franchising. Well, mm. we, we set yeah, ourselves up for a big fall as opposed to what we thought we were doing, which is basically bringing our business to a point of greater viability because um and it was well out of sequence with the Fibonacci too by the way like if yeah. we were talking if for those of you who've done the Fibonacci stuff with us we know that you know now that you've got to go segment by segment doesn't mean you have to be stuck in a segment for any particular length of time but you do have to go segment by segment and you know we just managed to attract someone in who said hey we can sort you out big time. You'll never have to worry about money ever again. And we were just basically covering our bottom line, weren't we? Yes, yeah, so it's like, hey, we can help you yes. to go from level 13 to 189 or 32 or whatever it is, but we can we can support you in that jump. It's <laughs> like, so, oh, fabulous. Well, what we know now is, yeah, great. So even if we do end up with something in that big jump, it's going to have no foundation. It's going to, it has to fall over in one way or another. Because it can't sustain that. No, that's right. Imagine a little trunk of a tree and then the top part grows into the fullness of the tree. It's just going to fall over. Like it's <laughs> not going to survive very well at all. No. Like that's essentially what we tried to do. Yeah. So what's the bridge? The bridge in this is to remain in the love and the lightness of who you really are, like continually bringing yourself back to that. You, you are going to be in your ego from time to time. You are going to be... Um, avoiding the the pain and doing all the things that you do to try and stay in management but we just don't identify with the pain we don't identify with being separate from everything and everyone you know we bring ourselves back to the oneness uh i think it was deb oh yeah deb said before that you that you know she said well i was worried about what everyone else was thinking you know i was embarrassed i felt in shame and all that sort of stuff you just sort of forget how much people aren't actually thinking about you they're really not. They're in their own shit. They've they got their own stuff going on. And in our mind, it's like, no, they're constantly thinking about me and what I'm doing and not doing and how it disintegrous I am and how this, you know, and all this. They're fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> they've got too much of their own stuff going on but we're sort of best is so much energy into it what will people think if and when blah 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 it's like no nah, just just get on with it like who who cares you do know? your thing you do your thing absolutely so uh so there it is that's that's the bridge to be in the oneness and be in the connection so what's your mission you know that that mission that focus that clarity of who you are you know the law of refinement again we spoke about at the entropic creator law of refinement the 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 more refined you are with who you are what your mission is the more you can live out of your heart and you can remain in love it gives you the clarity the vitality all the things that we were talking about but when you're not in your heart you're not creative. You can't access your truth. You can't be with the truth. You can't be vulnerable and open to anything and all possibilities. So there's a big, there's a big cost to not being in your heart. And you think it's okay to live this way when you're, when you're not aware of it because others do. You know, they're in, it's okay to be weak. It's okay to be, you know, in that state of disempowerment. You're allowed to be angry with others and frustrated with the world or upset about something or in fear and anxiety about things that may or may not happen or depressed or have regrets about the past or approval seeking. And the list is long, but that's how everybody else lives. And we buy into this, this collective agreement that, well, that's, that's life. That's how it is. And it's keeping us out of our hearts and keeping us in the suffering. So, you know, I don't know about you, but I'd, I'd rather to say, you know, look, I'm ready to give that up. I'm ready to fuck that off <laughs> and just go, I don't need any of that stuff. I just need to know what's true for me. All right. So what we'll do now is we're just going to do a little demonstration. We're just going to do a, just a little short exercise here in, in this space. So uh, just think of one of your choices, uh, maybe one of the ones you have the most difficulty with. It might be big or it might feel like there's lots of obstacles in the way or something where you feel a little close hearted to it. You know, there's just there's something about it that's like, oh, this is going to be hard or I can't see myself getting there or, you know, whatever. There's challenges there, aren't there? Yeah. yeah. So just just Resistance. have that choice there. And just maybe if you've got if you are writing, just write it down on the top of your page just so you know what it is that we're talking about. Just whatever the theme is of the choice. You don't need to write the whole choice, but, you know, if it's your house choice, just write house. Um, 
And once you've got it, just look lovingly into the camera for me so I know that those of you with your cameras on at least will be indicative of the group uh, that we have our choice. So are we all looking lovingly at the camera? Almost. Yes. Okay. Enough. That's great. So now what I want you to do is I want you to occupy a circle and the circle is defined as close hearted in relation to this choice. So, you know, just drop into that state of innocence and receive super consciously what it is. Oh, by the way, choose to get the benefit of the exercise. Just take a moment and do that too and be of service to yourself. But now be in a, a circle of closed hearted be closed hearted and just be with the choice and see where the pain is, where the perceptions are, what your behaviours and consequences of those behaviours are, what are the reactions. And as you sink into it, you really start to get it, start to write them down. I'll just give you a couple of minutes to do that. So just the last couple of things. What are you noticing? Just when your heart is closed to this choice and you've got to control the conditions, what's there? Just capture the last little bit. You can always come back to this, by the way, and get more out of it if you like, or use a different choice, of course. And now just rub that circle out. You don't need that circle anymore. Just rub it out. We won't need it. It's just an insightful exercise. That's all we're doing. And now just reestablish a circle, and you're occupying the circle, and now you're open-hearted. Everything's possible. Everything's open. Everything's allowed to be. There are no conditions that are not allowed to exist. Open your heart to the choice and super consciously receive this one and start to write down when you start to get it, write down everything, the attributes, how you're feeling, what's going on, what, what comes up for you in the open hearted circle. So just, just finishing up with what you've got again, you can always come back and you can always do some more. And when you're done, just doughy eyed looking into the camera, open hearted. <laughs> Ready to receive the last part of the call. <laughs> awesome. Very good. All right. So so now we're going to open it up to you guys and, and uh, to share. What did you see? What are you noticing about the two different orientations, closed-hearted to open-hearted? What became revealed to you? Was there, you know, there's probably things you already knew, but were there some new things that you hadn't hadn't seen before? So physically, in your physiology, it's a tweak to, to define it from fear to excitement. Um, yes. Actually, I used to use this when I was I was doing a lot of presenting around the country on the early 2000s, and um, there was something biologically that had kicked in because I obviously had three kids and my youngest then was probably about two or three, Jay, he was only little, and um, I was doing a, I was a lot of weekends away doing presenting on stages and things, and um, for whatever reason, all of a sudden I sort of had this fear of flying, you know, and I'm like, this is just bizarre why you know I love flying I love traveling I love it but it must have been to do with leaving the kids you know at home in the nest going out and what if something happens to mama bird you know while she's out flying and that sort of thing I started getting this this irrational fear and it wasn't to the point where I was like you know but inside I was putting myself through a lot of suffering and that sort of thing and then I realized that actually I could very quickly turn the fear feeling into excitement so what I would do is on takeoff which was the most thrilling time right it's like oh I'm just going to lean into the excitement and it was funny because the day I chose to do that I ended up right down the back with all the unaccompanied minors I don't know what they were thinking whether I looked like a motherly type that would look after them or I looked like an unaccompanied minor I mean you know, that's a pretty young probably, thing yeah anyway <laughs> what we ended up doing was um I'd go let's make a game of this it just came to me and, and we're sitting there and there's this, this row of kids on either side of me I was on the aisle there was two kids this way and three kids that way I said that's when the ta plane takes off. Let's all try and lean forward and see if we can hold ourselves there for the whole time. And we're taking off and the kids are laughing and having such a ball with the whole thing. And it was just it was high vibe the whole way. And so instead of sitting up the back going, what am I hearing amongst all these little you're a little snots, you know. <laughs> uh, we, we had a great time. We just turned it, and from there forevermore, it was like, no, it's exciting to go flying. But it was just that small tweak, a little reframe uh, that, that I did at the time. And then I never had a problem since. And, um, you know, it was, it was super cool. I still refer to that now. Mm. Um, anyway, I don't know if I got off track. 
Well, when you, when you think about physiologically, uh, it, it, they feel so damn similar. Mm. That, you know, it's not a, it's not, there's no big gap to moving from fear to excitement. It's Absolutely. Just a, a decision to. You know. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, so yeah, it's probably just what you felt was excitement, not, fe- not fear. You know, just, it's how we decide to label it, mm. put it in. Yeah. So we can re- redefine it anytime. But the other thing I wanted to say about what you said there was, you know, it just felt like it was happening. And Shira mentioned this as well. But you remember when we we're in our oneness we're connected to all time and space so it's almost like we're remembering what's happened even though it hasn't happened yet in in this linear time we're actually in the end result which is what we talk about when we're making choices be in the end result we're not away from it with something that's happened in, is going to happen in the future hopefully one day maybe it's like no this actually has flipped and happened it's happened and and i'm just here experiencing it because I'm now connected to all time and space. You know, how cool is that? We're, we're in the quantum then. We're playing with quantum physics and, and all these sorts of things. So we're not subject to the, the linear so much. Mm. Mm. Another step out of the rational, which is beautiful. You know, when we enter this physical world, when we're born, the first thing we receive is our own breath. Like that is the first thing you receive when you get here, you know, to and, and we have to become receivers in order to be givers. So, or to be creators, right? So that's what we're doing when we're, when we're creating, we're giving, we're giving to the world, we're giving to ourselves, we're giving to the greater good. So, so the first thing breathing in is our first receptiveness. How cool is that? No one can give it to us. The only person who can do it is you. Maybe the slap on the butt by the doctor helps, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Whether they do or don't, I know I birthed three children who neither of them, none of them got a slap on the butt and they all just spontaneously took their first breath, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, so that is our first thing. So I love that. I love the metaphor. 